Our guest, Danielle Archambault, is a visual storyteller who creates graphic novels as a way to document a society's cultural and linguistic landscape. She is here to demonstrate both traditional and digital tools that she uses to create her visual stories. So welcome, Danielle. Hi, Sally. Thank you for having me. So tell us a little bit about what is visual storytelling to you? Well, visual storytelling is anytime you tell a story and you use visuals. For some people, it could be picture books, like writing children books. It could be travel books, also travel sketchbooks. In my case, I do cartoons, comic books, graphic novels, graphic memoirs. How did you get started in this process? Have you always been a visual artist? Well, not really. <laughs> I, um, I'm, I was always interested in comic books and graphic novels. I uh, read them since I was a child. It's very important in the French culture. We do that. We have a lot of uh, artists who write for adults. So even when you're an adult, you read graphic novels and comic books. And then in 2009, Stanford University offered a, a, a course ca called Writing a Graphic Novel. It was in oh. the Continuing Education Program. And I took the class and I, get, I got hooked. And I decided from there that I wanted to do this and I started writing books and uh, doing, more, doing art and uh, uh, teaching myself, actually. Well, interesting. So what is your background then? Well, my background is in linguistics. So I'm from Montreal, Canada. I was a tenured professor in the linguistics department until 1998. My specialty was uh, speech technology, linguistics, uh, neurolinguistics, and uh, Quebec French. And I see what I do as a continuation of what I was doing as a professor, which is I educate and I document and I talk about culture and languages. These are stories that take place in Montreal in the 1950s. And they're called stairway stories because Montreal is famous for its uh, exterior stairways. We have a lot of them. So on this page, I'm going to do the penciling. I do the penciling, and then I do the inking on top of the penciling. And the ink is India ink. It's black. And you want the ink to stay at the surface of the paper and not to get absorbed by oh, the paper. Yes. That's why you need smooth and not vellum, a texture. Uh, this is the kind of pencil I use. It's a 2H number 5, and I use 2H because I do the inking on top of the penciling, I'm going to have to erase. So I need something that's really pale and that's not going to sh shed a lot of graphite on the paper. You do lines like this, going oh, back and forth. interesting. So it measures it out yes. for you? Oh, yeah, that's Yeah, and then nice. I can put it aside and then I can see I'm going to write my name. And I also use this kind of eraser, which is a triangle. Uh -huh. eraser because erasing is important because we do the inking and then we need to erase if I don't want to erase I'm going to use a blue pencil oh. because when you photocopy it doesn't reproduce it doesn't show I use India ink and there are many tools I can use I can use brushes I can use pens depending on what I want to do the tool that I like the best uh, which it's this one it's called a pencil brush and the reason I like this one is because when you open it you don't have to have a bottle of ink with you because it has a cartridge aha uh -huh. and it's called a pencil brush it's called it's called a brush a pencil brush pencil brush oh, and the reason oh. we use brushes it's, be it's because you can vary the thickness of the line. Right. And when you do uh, drawings like that, one way of indicating perspective, something is in the foreground or in the back, is the thickness of your line as oh. well. This is the cover of the book, A Year Without a Drink. And this is the first inking. After I ink, I scan, and then I put it in Photoshop. And this is the first time I scanned it. And you can see what's going to happen. Pay attention to the the glass, the mouth of the character, and the cat. And then I did some corrections. And this time, the glass is in black. The woman has a different expression on her face. And the cat is drinking this time out of the bottle. 
and then we see what it does. I did the watercolor and it's... Uh, you put the watercolor in using the computer? No, no, no. I watercolor. I did correction using black and white and then I put the color on uh, myself. And this is an example of... Uh, d this is an example of another story that takes place in uh, California. And this time the col uh, I did the color digitally. See, I scanned my black and white pictures mm -hmm. and then I did the color digitally. But the advantages of that, of doing it digitally, is that I can decide, for example, because I put it on a different layer, that I don't like this color. I can go choose another color and change it very quickly. Wow. And so I can do also things with the text. So there are things that we can do uh, with Photoshop that you wouldn't be able to do. So how did you select just the jacket? Oh, this is a tool. This is uh, a wand. This is the, the tool that's here. It's like, it's called a wand tool and you the can magic select wand. a magic wand. And the other thing I can do with, that I, uh, with Photoshop is, for example, the, the picture we showed before, I can use the same background with and having two story. Uh, if I have a story in two panels, I can use the same background and put uh, the, uh, the characters together. So let's look at this one. This is a story that has two panels. This is the background. These are the characters. They are on different layers. And see, I can, um, I can hide the characters if I want. Oh, look because they're done differently. I can hide the text and actually I translated this one and I can bring the text back. So this looks like the panel. This is the first panel, but okay. see if I have the second panel, it's the same background, but the characters are in a different position and they're doing something else. What's great about this also is I can experiment that. Let's see, I select this layer and I have my characters here, and they're, they're kind of in the same position as in the first panel. Well, something I can do is I can take them and decide that I want to bring them forward. So I'm, I'm going to, hmm. oh, here it is. Here, I can do something like that. And then I can, oops, no, I don't want to do that, undo. Oh, that's what I love about computers. Undo. You can't undo with watercolor so easily. So I can see, I can bring them at, nice. at the front of the picture, and it gives a different feeling. 